back with salutations. I was asked to do a get ready with me style video in which I talk about things while I'm putting on my makeup and I don't usually watch these kinds of videos if I'm being honest because I feel like they can be kind of boring depending on what the person is talking about so I wasn't really sure what to do here. I decided that I would talk about some embarrassing stories from my life because I have a lot of those and specifically today I'll be talking about times that my being squeamish has caused some sort of issue for me. If you are also squeamish, then consider this a kind of content warning because I am going to be mentioning blood and injuries a bit as I talk about what caused the problem for me. I'm not going to be too descriptive and I'm obviously not going to be like putting in pictures or anything, but you know, those with sensitive stomachs should be aware of what's coming here. I'll start out with when I was about eight years old. I went with my mom to go see Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in theaters. And there's a part at the end that made me queasy and I guess Spoilers if you haven't seen or read it still somehow. The part where Harry stabs the diary with the basilisk fang um, somehow made me feel crazy because I guess the like combination of the stabbing motion and then like spurting just messed with my poor little brain even though the ink didn't look like blood and it's never made me feel sick in any other viewing of that movie but I don't know, when I was a kid sitting in the theater and I just saw the, the ink spurting out everywhere I ended up feeling really gross so my mom had to bring me out of the theater for a bit so I could kind of calm down and then we caught the last couple minutes of the movie. Around the same age, I had a squeamish problem during a piano lesson of all times. So uh, my teacher had a cut on her forehead just like that from something that had happened a few days before the lesson. And in order to protect her beautiful expensive piano, I had to just not look at her face during the entire lesson which she was totally understanding about it, but I felt super bad just like not being able to look at her without feeling gross because it really wasn't that bad of a cut, but it was there and that was enough to mess me up apparently. A couple of years later, another piano related incident, which is weird. Um, so my older brother was helping some people move a piano in their house and I guess something went wrong when they were moving it like up some stairs or something and he got bonked on, again, the forehead. <laughs> Another piano and forehead thing. One look at my brother's bleeding head and I was a shaky disaster and he didn't need stitches or anything and I'm pretty sure he was less distressed about the incident than I was, which is embarrassing because he is the one that was bleeding. So one day when I was about 14-ish, I think, I was walking to my mom's car after school like usual. Mom used to park just kind of near the school in a neighborhood. So I was walking through the neighborhood, everything was going fine, and then some kid who was kind of nearby me, behind me, ended up crashing his bike into a mailbox. And so I turned around to see what the heck that weird noise was, and there was just this guy bleeding on the ground near me. Um, I think he had some cuts on like his face and his arms or something. I don't entirely remember. All that I clearly remember from that day is turning around, seeing blood, and literally running away. <laughs> I didn't just abandon him, there were other people that were nearby that would have been a lot more help than I was, but I just, I saw the blood and I was just like, oh no, and I seriously just turned and ran. And I still feel bad about that. My freshman year of high school, my biology teacher had us watch a movie called Gattaca, which it was really interesting. It's about like genetics and stuff. The movie isn't like violent or anything, but at some point during the beginning-ish of the movie, I don't actually remember what it was that like made me freak out, but I do remember just kind of quietly excusing myself and ending up sitting on the floor outside the classroom for a while and then just kind of like sneaking back in once I was feeling better. I don't know if a teacher even like noticed because I was sitting near the back of the classroom and I was a quiet person anyway, but yeah. As a teenager, I needed to be tested for anemia, which meant blood draws, which don't usually go very well for me. In order to get my blood drawn and not get messed up and like pass out or something, I was laying down and I also had a warm washcloth on my face and there was an extra nurse in the room who was holding my other hand and like talking to me to try to keep me distracted. Um, so that was, it was kind of a spectacle and the person who was drawing my blood was the person they brought in for like little children because they were extra gentle or something. Like, it was embarrassing. Another time I needed to get, I don't remember if it was a shot or another like blood drawing thing, but I had Temple Run on my other hand. I was playing Temple Run with my left hand as my right arm was getting like poked or stabbed or whatever. In my current world issues class as a sophomore, 
We were watching a movie called Seven Years in Tibet. I don't remember much of anything about the plot beyond the parts that traumatized me, but it's Brad Pitt and he was like mountain climbing and he was in Tibet or something. I really don't know why we were watching that. But while he was doing his mountain climbing stuff, he had those special shoes with the, the spikes on them for getting, you know, a solid hold on the mountain. You can probably guess where this is going. He ended up like stabbing himself in the, the leg or the foot or something with those spiky shoes. And uh, at that point, I sprinted out of my classroom and just kind of stood out in the Pacific Northwest rain for a while. And the cold air and the wetness did like help me calm down faster than I, I usually am able to. I think there's also a part where he like slices open a, a dead horse or something. I don't know. I've tried to block most of it from my memory and apparently I was successful because I really don't remember much about it. I'm trying to do pumpkin-y eyes to match my little sweater, even though it's 95 degrees where I am right now, so the sweater is rather uncomfortable, but dang it, it's October and I'm gonna be pumpkin-y. I need a brighter orange for in here, I think. I'm sure it will surprise exactly none of you to find out that I had some problems with uh, health classes in school. <laughs> I was the kind of student that teachers could mostly just like ignore and trust that I would do what I was supposed to which is why I never got in trouble for just suddenly running out of the room or just disappearing without explaining to the teacher what was going on or getting permission or anything. My eighth grade health slash gym teacher made an arrangement with me where every day I would just kind of stick my head in the room to be marked as present and then just head straight to the library where I would spend the rest of the period working on just worksheets and packets and stuff that he gave me. And that was really the, the best arrangement for everyone involved because I got my work done and I learned things and I did not have to embarrass myself in front of everybody by feeling sick multiple times. Another health class that I had to take was in my sophomore year of high school. So the way my high school had things set up was you would do your current world issues class for one semester and then the next semester that same class would become a health class from that same person who was teaching you. So uh, she was already aware of my problems because of the seven years in Tibet uh, problem that I had. I was fine with learning about like the names of bones and things because that's not gross. But on the days where things were more questionable, I would just go and do an alternate project from the safety of the adjoining room next door, which was the chemistry classroom. The day that the poor health class had to watch a video of a lady, give, lady giving birth, um, us in the chemistry room we could hear the like horrified screams from next door and that really solidified the idea that like, yeah, I made the right choice by not being in that room because if they're all screaming, I would have been crying. <laughs> I'm really lucky that I had very understanding and kind teachers who didn't tell me to just, you know, suck it up and sit in the classroom anyway. They probably just didn't want to get puked on. Nothing that I remember ended up happening during my junior year. Like, none of my teachers that year made us watch anything gross, I guess. So my senior year, I was in a theater tech class where we ended up just kind of watching a lot of movies, especially when it was about time for the plays to be happening because my teacher was just like, you know what, here, just movie, it's fine. And it was always like somewhat related, but also not at all. <laughs> so at one point we were watching a movie about that giant tsunami that happened in 2004. And as you might expect from a movie about a natural disaster, there were a lot of injuries happening. So it was all fine in the beginning um, when it was just, you know, happy family on vacation, yay. And apparently Tom Holland was one of the kids that was part of the main family. I learned that when I looked up the movie again recently. Once the tsunami happened in the movie, I was just kind of out of there. So I ended up spending most of that period just in the bathroom or in the like theater's little foyer area. And I think I remember texting one of the other kids in the class to have them explain to the teacher where I suddenly went. And because it was a long movie, we didn't end up finishing it in the one day. So the next day I came into class and I was like, look, Miss G, I, mm, I can't do it. So she had me just go up to the sound booth and work on my math homework. I got to just sit there in my little happy place and do some math in the dark and not have to watch people get like operated on and walk around with bloody clothes and stuff. I always thought or at least hoped that someday eventually when I was an adult I would grow out of these squeamish problems and be more okay with seeing blood or hearing people talk about blood. Um, that does not seem to be the case though. <laughs> 
because I decided a little while ago that I wanted to watch the movie A Quiet Place because it was a really interesting concept and I took sin sign language in high school and college so I was like hey I'll be able to kind of understand what's going on even without subtitles. There's a part towards the end which I guess spoilers it's not really that much of a spoiler but the lady ends up stepping on I think it was a nail or something just kind of sticking out of one of her stairs and she messes up her foot pretty bad like it's it's just gross and I had to just pause the movie, step away from my laptop, and just, I was suddenly feeling real gross. And up to that point, it was an enjoyable movie. It was really interesting, you know, these monsters that come attack you if you make noise. I paused the movie and looked up on my phone what the rest of the plot was going to be to see if it was going to continue to, like, cause problems for me. And it turns out I don't actually like the way the movie ended anyway. So... Now I can just pretend that that's not how it ended, because I never saw how it did. <laughs> I've learned that it's really for the best that I just look up the like parent guide on IMDb before I watch any kind of movie that's action-y or like, starring Vin Diesel or whatever, just because if I know what's gonna happen, then I can kind of prepare myself for it a little bit, and then it doesn't always mess me up as badly. It still is not pleasant, but sometimes I can kind of get through it, or like, I'll see it coming and go, oh. I still can't handle whenever someone gets shot and they have to have the bullet, like, pulled out of them. I can't handle the noises that go with that or the visuals, so I end up just closing my eyes and covering my ears and telling whoever's next to me to poke me when it's done. <laughs> I had to do that for the scene in the fourth Indiana Jones with the ants, too. I was in the theater with my friend and I told him just, okay, when the ants are gone, just poke me, because I, I can't look. But that wasn't a gross feeling, that was just a- ew, bugs. <laughs> I end up spoiling movies for myself a lot because I have to check to make sure that I'm not going to be sick while I'm watching them. But it's fine, I'd rather have spoilers than, like, pass out or something. I'm still not entirely sure why um, sometimes seeing blood just really makes my body overreact and other times it's not that bad. Uh, because as a uterus owner, I have had to deal with periods for a good chunk of my life and I mean, when I do feel queasy from periods, it's not because of visuals, it's because that's just a symptom and periods are awful. So that doesn't mess me up. And I also, uh, when I was a teenager, used to hurt myself sometimes and that never made me feel sick, which is weird because I was sometimes bleeding and like, that was fine. Um, but then just like hearing about someone describing an injury or like, just the, the smallest things can just send me into panic mode. A few years ago, I think it was like three years ago, I accidentally nicked my finger while I was shaving, and it wasn't like a slash or anything, it was just like a bad paper cut, essentially, and I was still so, like, shaky and weak from that that I almost, like, fell over in the shower, which is incredibly embarrassing. I should be able to handle this kind of thing, but apparently I can't. One of the worst squeamish episodes of my entire life just happened earlier this year. So back in March, my husband noticed that there was a cat outside in our backyard, and of course I got very excited, and I went outside to try to befriend it. It was kind of wary, it was staying a little further away, and it was over by our back fence, where one of the fence boards has fell, fallen down a while ago, and I stepped on it, and it turns out there was a nail poking out of it, and so I, I was stepping lightly, thankfully, but I stepped onto this nail and it stabbed through my flip-flop and at first I didn't realize what had happened, I just knew that I was suddenly in pain and so I like left some cat treats over by the fence to, you know, try to be friends with the cat and then I sort of like hobbled back into the house and that's when everything went bad because I took off my shoe and then I realized, oh, there's blood on that shoe, oh, and on my foot, and now it's on the floor. And it wasn't like a serious injury, but you know, I had been jabbed enough that I was bleeding. My body just panicked, so I was weak and shaky and queasy, and everything was going wrong. And my poor husband had to clean the blood off the floor and also go and get a band-aid and neosporin for me because I, I couldn't stand up for fear of falling over. And I was like, rambling out loud about the plot of a video game I've been playing to keep myself thinking about things other than the blood that was just like filling my mind. After I had a band-aid on my toe and everything was all cleaned up and there was no nothing more to like visually freak me out besides the mental pictures that wouldn't leave, um, I laid down on the couch. I was like, okay, I'll just like lay here until I feel better 
it'll be fine. And then I thought after a few minutes, oh, maybe like my blood sugar is low, I should go eat an orange. So I got up and went to the kitchen and started trying to peel an orange. But then like halfway through peeling this orange, I thought, am I gonna be sick? So <laughs> I had to like run over to the bathroom in case I was gonna be sick. I felt sick, I didn't get sick and I didn't pass out, thankfully. But I was like shaky for the rest of the day and I just got so messed up by the tiniest little like poke in the toe. I have clearly not gotten over uh, the blood issues, which is unfortunate. It's very inconvenient when it does come up. So speaking of things being inconvenient, uh, I just went and switched out of my pumpkin sweater because it's too dang hot and I really wanted to be all October-y and in the pumpkin mood and stuff, but the weather was just like, nah. <laughs> So uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt now. After my um, little foot stab there, because the nail was of unknown cleanliness, I ended up having to go and get a tetanus shot, just to be safe. Um, which, I feel like the anticipation of the shot is always worse than getting the shot itself. I've never done great with getting shots. One day in, I think like sixth grade, just called down to the office to leave school early and I didn't know what was going on. Turns out my mom had a doctor's appointment for me to go get some shots and she decided it'd be better to just not tell me about it until I was like in the car asking what was going on because she didn't want me to spend the whole day just anticipating going and getting stabbed, which I mean, fair, that probably was the best move there. I have gotten better about dealing with shots um, and it still freaks me out a bit, but it's not too bad. Like when I, I got my flu shot a while ago and when I got the tetanus shot, it was like a little bit of nervousness, but it was it was fine. I was able to handle it. I'm getting better. I haven't had my blood drawn recently and I'm sure that would still be a problem because that's a longer process and there's also the whole like, don't look because it's all gross thing happening. But I don't know, I'm improving slowly, maybe. Um, where's... You probably noticed I have stuff behind me now instead of just a big empty room. This wall right here used to be what my desk was against and I had this little shelf set up for just my own enjoyment and then I started making videos and I realized wow this room behind me is just a big beige nothingness which is also kind of like what it is outside around here. So I realized I should just you know rotate my desk or something so that there's stuff behind me. I also when I moved my desk, I had to take everything off the desk in order to move it safely and more easily. And then I took that opportunity to go and reorganize things a little bit. So I'm still getting used to a new setup and I couldn't find this brush, but we're good now. I'm a little bummed you don't get to see the whole- there's a third shelf up here that has some more stuff on it. But when I put these shelves up, I was not anticipating recording myself sitting in front of them. So I didn't think about, will this be visible on camera? So you only get to see this shelf and a little bit of that one, and sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe at some point I'll figure out a, a better way to have things behind me, but this is just how it is right now. I'm kind of out of squeamish stories, I think, unless there's something that I'm forgetting. Um, so now I get to figure out what to fill the rest of this video with, which should be exciting. Okay. Plan for subject for the rest of the video is Halloween because that's coming up and it's fun. As a child, I didn't actually really care that much about Halloween costumes, which is weird because now that's like one of my favorite parts of the entire year is Halloween costumes. I was a black cat for like several years in a row in elementary school just because it was easy and convenient and you know, didn't require any bulky costume or anything. It was just like some cat ears and a tail and wearing black. Pretty much. At one point in like second grade, I think, I asked my mom, who is an amazing seamstress, she can sew like anything, uh, so I asked her for a Curious George costume because I really loved Curious George when I was a kid. So I was a giant monkey wearing a, a red shirt and a hat. Um, and I can probably find a picture online somewhere, but I don't know what I really want to post it because it's just kind of strange. My mom did a great job with the costume, but looking back, I'm just like, why? Why did I want to do that? I was Tinkerbell one year and again my mom made a costume for me. For the shoes, I took some cheap green flip-flops and like we tied small tennis balls to the middle part and like wrapped them in a white feather boa or something to make the little poofy things. Um, and like it kind of worked, but I also wasn't about to, you know, be a 10 year old wearing a like little tube top short skirt dress. So 
it, I don't know, it looked kind of weird. Definitely one of the fancier costumes I've ever had was when I decided I wanted to be Hermione because, of course. Mom found this website where a lady had figured out, like, all these details about Hogwarts uniforms and everything. So I have this, like, super accurate little Gryffindor robe and a sweater and skirt that my mom made just by hand. And she even, she sewed a little, like, cell phone pocket in the robe for me, which is super cool. I think in, like, college is when I really decided, you know what, costumes are really fun and I want to do more of them. My freshman year of college, I had, like, five different little costumes I kind of threw together, like, the week before Halloween, just to get excited about it. I was Hermione my freshman year, maybe also my sophomore year, just because it was a really great costume. And then I decided to start doing more, like, DIY kind of costumes because I wasn't living at home anymore and I couldn't just say, hey mom, can you sew this for me? So I was Black Widow and my husband was Batman, which it's not really like a pairing that makes sense, but you know, we were heroes. It was fine. My brain is all over the place right now. I am sorry. Um, can you see that there's a lot of blush on my face? I don't know if you can, but there, there kind of is because it's hard to do a good job of doing my makeup and also be trying to be entertaining at the same time. <laughs> um, okay, I want to add some green to my eyes to amp up the pumpkinness. I'm going to try to do some eyeliner on my lower lash line, but it tickles and I don't usually like how that feels, so I'll see how this goes. As an adult, I have definitely gotten more into doing Halloween costumes. Oh, uh... Once we moved to where we are currently living, my husband and I, every year, well, except this year, have been going to a like trunk or treat thing nearby because kids don't really walk around in neighborhoods around here at Halloween, at least not in our neighborhood. We've gotten like two people for the past couple of years. So we'll go to a trunk or treat instead. Our first year for that, I was Scarlet Witch and he was Wolverine because if you watch the video where I did the dice challenge thing, you probably noticed that he has a lot of facial hair, <laughs> just like hair in general. So we made him some little like fake claws out of like cardboard and popsicle sticks with tinfoil wrapped around them. The next year I was Black Widow again and he was Tony Stark. So when he was Wolverine, he had his beard shaved to be all like mutton choppy and weird like Wolverine does. And then for Tony Stark, he again like shaved his facial hair into the, the shape of Tony's little, like, goatee thing. <sighs> okay, I know you're not supposed to tug on your eye, but I can't get to this part without it, so I'm sorry I'm tugging. I don't know how this came up, but we decided we wanted to be Jesse and James of Team Rocket from Pokemon. We bought him this purple wig, <laughs> which looked ridiculous, especially the wig that I found was actually pretty nice, but his was very, like, plasticky looking and goofy. Um, and he shaved all his facial hair off, which he hadn't done that in I don't know how long. We borrowed a little cage from one of our friends to put a Mimikyu plushie in. To be like, oh hey, see, we caught a Pikachu, we're great. And then some of the little kids were like, that's not a Pikachu. And we were just like, what do you mean? That's totally a Pikachu. <laughs> and it was, it was great. We also had an actual Pikachu plushie sitting in the back of our car, kind of peeking out the window. So the little kids would be like, no, Pikachu's over there. I wanted to also make our trunk somehow look like the Team Rocket Meowth balloon or something but that didn't end up working out because I am not a, a crafts kind of person. It just doesn't really happen. We have a Meowth plushie that we brought to that too, so that when we did our Team Rocket speech thing, which people asked us to do a couple of times, we could have Meowth join in with the, like, that's right at the end. We have so many other plans for costumes that we want to do, but this year we're not gonna bother dressing up because, I mean, it's not safe to be going to gatherings right now. And we're not, no one's gonna be coming to our door this year. If only like two kids came last year, no one's coming this year. So that's a huge bummer. But our future costume plans, so <laughs> this one is gonna sound really dumb, and it, it is. Going with the whole giant dwarvy beard thing, um, our plan was to have my husband dress up like Gimli from Lord of the Rings, and we weren't entirely sure what I would be with that, but. Um, our best guess so far is an axe, <laughs> because, you know, and my axe, so I need to figure out how to become an axe. I was kind of thinking I could dress up like a giant can of axe body spray, but that, I don't know. What we were going to do this year is have, um, 
Uh, oh, I forgot a costume. I forgot one. So two years ago, he dressed up like Hagrid because, again, giant beard. A lot of our costumes revolve around his beard. <laughs> he was Hagrid and I had a little dress made by this really awesome company that I can link um, that does like custom requests for things. They made me a dress that looks like a dragon. So it was Hagrid and a dragon and, you know, that was cool. So that same company that made me the dragon dress, um, we were gonna have them make us little suits to be um, Beast and Mystique from the X-Men. With my hair the way it currently is, you know, it's red and short and I could just like slick it back and do the Mystique thing. But I mean, that's not gonna happen and my hair probably isn't gonna look like this again next year. So we may or may not be Beast and Mystique at any point now, I'm not sure. We also had the plan of he was gonna be Jack Sparrow because his beard is actually long enough to braid now. Like I tried that a while ago and I need to spray my face, so hold on. Okay, I think it's safe to talk now. <laughs> it's not a good idea to be talking while setting spray happens because then it's just hit. While my husband was Jack Sparrow, the plan was for me to be dressed up like a swan um, because I guess name reveal. Um, hi, my name is Elizabeth or Lizzie or whatever. Um, so I was gonna dress up like a swan and be Elizabeth Swan. Ha! It was gonna be real funny. So I have this white dress that I was gonna cover in feathers. We were gonna get him a, a little hat and a like sword. Obviously that has also not happened because there's not much point in doing a costume this year. Um, let's see, I think I'm pretty much done with my face beyond lipstick, which now I need to figure out what lip color I want to do. And the lipstick that I'm thinking of is in the drawer that my camera slash phone is resting on, so um, maybe I just won't wear that one. Let's do maybe NYX Ginger Snap? Maybe? Mm. I mean, I'm not going anywhere, so if it looks weird, then whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah, this color pretty much works. Um, it's not exactly what I had in mind. I was gonna wear MAC cream in your coffee, but that's underneath the camera, so never mind. Um, so uh, hopefully this was interesting and entertaining and you enjoyed watching me flounder around and try to speak and make up at the same time. If you want me to do more getting ready with me kinds of videos that are more structured and less all over the place, um, or if there's something you want me to change about the format of this, if I should have been like explaining what I was using as I was going, I can try to like put a little thing over here that shows you what I was using or have them in the description or something in case you do want to follow along. <laughs> this wasn't meant to be a tutorial for pumpkin eyes, but I guess if you want to do these pumpkin eyes, then just a variety of orange shimmers, a darker orange in your crease, and then some green. Ta-da! <laughs> so I hope you've had a good day, and I hope you're staying safe out there, and just, you know, keep on being positive, even though the world is falling apart around us. Bye!